learn and Sorry for and that. the way that it can be used in our advantage and uh, what are the new things that are changing uh, daily in the industry. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. So we welcome everybody. Thank you once more for being with us. Uh, Mr. Danilo is with us. Uh, he is ready for an interactive and uh, I'm sure a very interesting workshop today. We thank him very much. So let's start. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Danilo. Uh, I'm very happy to, to be in this position to talk about these topics. Um, this is something that I've been working on my whole life. And now I guess I do have some, some interesting knowledge that I can share and that uh, you might know or might not know, but I really hope that in the, in the end of the presentation, you will be inspired to try new things or to make new things, uh, whatever it is, I will be very happy if it is like that. Now, the name of the presentation is Pixels versus Paintbrush because it's about the transition from the traditional way of doing costume and art with uh, new ways and new softwares and programs. I will talk a little bit about four different softwares, uh, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Procreate, and ZBrush. These are old softwares that are very much used in the, in the whole process of making a costume in, in the big industries. And for someone who, who wants to do something like that, it needs to, one needs to have a a knowledge of how to use these programs. Um, the thing is, many of us who studied some kind of art already had the subject of uh, Photoshop because Photoshop is the first software that was made for uh, editing pictures and drawing. So you probably do have some knowledge of it, but the range of Photoshop use is huge. So we will start from the mother of all programs for editing, and that is Photoshop. At the beginning, we will be talking maybe a little more about software, and then we will start talking about how it is used in the costume industry and in art in general. So I know with Photoshop, it's like, I started to work in Photoshop when I was around 10 or 11. Uh, it, it's funny because uh, I would always used to hear from my sister, oh, she's not that beautiful. It's just Photoshop about some actress or singer. And I was like, no, no, it's natural. She is that beautiful. It's not a Photoshop. Having no idea what the Photoshop is. And the first time that I got my computer, I was like, I want to have a Photoshop. And I want to learn how to use it. And in the beginning, of course, it was very difficult and I didn't know anything. But in in time, I, I learned how to edit pictures, how to edit myself. Like I, in that teenage years, I had a huge thing to put wings on my back in Photoshop. And that was like, wow, wow, wow for me. <laughs> it was popular on, on Facebook. But the thing with, the, with Photoshop, you can seriously do a lot. Like there is no limit with what you can do with an image. You can retouch it, you can draw on it, you can add to it, you can make collages, you can do everything. And uh, since the Photoshop uh, is the first, one of the first popular programs that it's wide, widely used in the industry, in the creative industry, uh, all other softwares and programs are kind of made to copy it. So Photoshop, it's like the mother and to understand all of the other softwares, it would be best to start with Photoshop. It is the most complicated one, but still it is very important. Uh, also the thing that I would like to say that it's important for Photoshop, it does allow you to create everything for printing, for um, make a big projects, uh, 
possible and very easy to to resize and to in that way know how to how to make them so now here we have like all the tools that photoshop is giving us they're like in the left corner of the program but the right picture is actually the most important because you can see here you can control manually how many pixels do you want the your picture to have how high how like how big it to, to be how many pixels per inch you can change this into centimeters inches or whatever size way it works for you but it's really important for any project that needs to be printed out to to kind of get this part because it's it's really important to once something is printed out is that it's printed out like in a good way in a paper though, so you don't have black white lines anywhere now i'm going to show you like a very quick tutorial on how to do it and i have a couple of really really quick tutorials here i didn't want them to be like big and boring so it's very quick but yes in this tutorial we're going to show you how to resize an image in photoshop to any dimensions. Open Photoshop and click Open to pull up your image. Click on Image at the top menu bar, followed by Image Size. A window will pop up where you can adjust the width and height of your image based on different measurements, such as percent, pixels or centimeters. Click OK once you've made your adjustments. To save changes, click on File and either Save or Save As. Save will overwrite the original image with your adjustments, while Save As will allow you to keep both the original file and the new file. So that's the most basic way to do it. There are many ways to do it in Photoshop and everyone does Photoshop in a different way, especially okay. if it is self-taught. But uh, yeah, this is like a very quick tutorial that I downloaded so, so you can see what it is about. Okay. These are some examples of range of what Photoshop can do. So from a normal studio picture, you can get like Mortal Kombat image you like you can manually and very fully in control uh, change the colors the lighting uh, to make everything look more professional it is uh, it, it's for a reason the most used program for editing pictures in the world and it costs a lot so mm. the thing with photoshop yes to have it legally you have to pay a certain amount of money annually. Uh, but luckily, like everyone has a brother or a cousin or a neighbor who is a programmer and who can find a illegal free version online to download on your computer. <laughs> so like I do, uh, my brother is, is a programmer, so he always uh, adjusts me the new versions of Photoshop. Another thing about Photoshop, since it is like a very complex program, it takes a lot of your computer memory. So you do need to have like a good machine uh. to, to be able to use it properly. Mm. And uh, unlike other softwares, Photoshop is very, very difficult for a computer to handle. Right now, my computer I feel that it's boiling inside because it's already a bit old and I I, I need to get a new one but uh, yeah big Photoshop requires a, a good good computer and like in the left down corner we have like a perfect example of just editing picture to be prettier because like in every photo shooting uh, or or shooting for a movie poster, 
everything needs to go through Photoshop. And it is always Photoshop because the biggest companies, they all have licensed Photoshop. So it's the same program with the same tools. And if you know how to use them, you are in a good position because all the biggest companies are using those programs and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Here we have another. Uh, all right, to get started, I it. just open an image and I'd like to remove yeah. its back. Why, why it's important to know how to remove the background because in that case you can make like a great collages if you just want to take some object from the image and change it. Background can be a problem, but now with new versions of Photoshop, it becomes easier and easier to do that. So this is a very quick and fast tutorial how to remove a very difficult uh, background just to leave the model. So here. Ground. Now, before we begin, you'll And you'll want to go over to your layers and make sure the layer you want to remove the background on is unlocked. You can unlock it by simply clicking the lock toggle. Once your layer is unlocked and selected, go over to the properties window. If you can't find your properties, just go up to window and select properties. All right, now in the properties window under quick actions, you'll see remove background. So go ahead and click that. Okay, this looks good, but I'm noticing that it missed removing this white background light by your hat. To fix small mistakes like this, go up to Select and click Select and Mask. In this window, first make sure your transparency is all the way up to 100 so you can't see the background. Then over in the toolbar, make sure you have the Quick Selection tool selected. Now up here, you can either use the plus option to bring back footage from the background or the minus option to get rid of extra background that Photoshop missed. I'll use that to get rid of that white light from my background. Finally, I'll just hit OK to confirm my changes. All right, and that's looking better now. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Okay, somehow I lost myself. Um, can you hear me, see me? Yes, yes, perfect, perfect, okay. Daniel. Okay, I cannot hear or see anyone, but okay, for now it's fine. And of course, if we speak about Photoshop, we need to speak about some famous Photoshop mistakes <laughs> mm -hmm. because they are very common. And uh, Victoria's Secret used to have like the worst people doing their, their job <laughs> because Editing a picture is one, one thing, and situations that are happening like this is, is the other. Here we have Emma Stone for Burberry. And the situation that happened here, they, they wanted to put two of those models together. But uh, unfortunately, they didn't have a one picture that they both looked fine. So they took Emma that look good on one picture and him that look good on the other, but they forgot to continue her leg here. So yeah. it looks like she doesn't have half of the leg. <laughs> it's a mistake, it's a common, but it should not be happening in, in, in big campaigns like this. With Victoria's Secret, it was always, always the worst. Here we can see them trying to, to, to make her breasts wider, but they forgot to, to change a bra. So there is a very visible mistake here and it goes on Instagram. And this, this mistake was obviously done exactly in Photoshop because Photoshop does have tools for moving stuff like this. But I guess the, the person who did it was not that professional. And here they, I guess, just didn't want to advertise the bag, just the dress. So they quickly removed the bag, but the handle was left in her hand and oh. nobody nobody thought that it looked funny. And also the thing about Photoshop and uh, editing pictures with humans on it, it's very important to to know humans anatomy. So when you want to change something or want to make someone slimmer or more curvy or whatever that it is needed in the campaign, uh, 
you need to know the anatomy, how the body can move, how the body can look, and what things you can change or cannot. Because there were so many pictures of models being photoshopped and their spine looked broken. <laughs> so that was not working out. Here we're going to see another quick. Gravity, how to create a simple. This is something that you maybe you want to use it's 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 a cool tutorial it's very quick and um, uh, it can be used for not just this it can be used like for 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 many double exposure things. with photoshop with the quick selection tool selected click on select subject once selected properly click on the mask button right here click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose a solid color choose a white as the color and hit ok place it under the subject now select the subject layer and drag and drop the second photo that you want to create double exposure with over the canvas adjust it according to your preferences hit enter or return now we want to change the background color to that of the brightest color in this image so we're going to double click right here to change the background color and pick the brightest color of the new image hit ok come back to the landscape and change the blend mode from normal to screen to limit it just to the subject hold the alt key or the option key and click on the line between these two layers to add more details to the subject select the subject layer again click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves take the rightmost slider to the left now we don't want the shadows to be faded so take the leftmost slider to the right a little bit as well now we want the trees to fade away so you can select the mask right here take the brush black as the foreground color slowly and gradually erase the extras so that's how to quickly create a super simple double exposure yeah that's it it, it is cool to know also the thing uh, while we talk about Photoshop, uh, we have to mention that the drawing is also very much possible in Photoshop. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Danilo, perfect. Oh, okay, okay, because I cannot see myself, so I'm not sure if, if everything is fine. I would have to ask. Why, my dear? I I don't see myself anywhere. Now, now you no. skip them? No, I don't see myself or oh. anyone. I. I just see my screen and and my presentation, but it's it's okay. It doesn't matter. We will okay. we will fix it in the end. I just had to check if everything is correct. Uh, so yeah, you can use Photoshop also for drawing. It gives you like a great set of brushes, but you cannot draw with your mouse. So you have to buy a drawing pad. Uh, usually, the good ones are. Quite expensive, but you can find like the example here for 30 or 40 euros. It's it, they are very cheap. But the thing with them is I never like them. I tried to to, to draw on them. Uh, you draw on the pad, but the, all the movings and all the painting is still happening on the screen of your computer. So you so you're, you are basically moving your hand and watching it be in the in the computer it's it's a bit difficult for me it was for some people it was fine and i know many artists who are using it uh, but for me it was very difficult to to work on on this type of of pad now there are like new pads that have like the display and they they make it very easy but still it's a bit complicated because you have to be attached to your computer and to your photoshop on your computer and that uh, really does not give you mobility because now there are like a new pad that you can get everywhere but we will talk about that a bit later now i would quickly like go through adobe illustrator it's another software from adobe family uh, it is very widely used because uh, it gives you a uh, possibility to illustrate in vectors vectors i don't know if you know what vectors are it's not pixels because when you for example zoom in pixels or zoom out the picture changes and it loses the quality when something is done in vectors uh, you can zoom in however you want and it still will be the same quality so all the logos and the promo material is usually illustrated in in vectors, in usually in Illustrator or Canva or 
some other software, but mostly Illustrator. So it's very popular and uh, yes, you can also start from the paper sketch, scan it, upload it, and then from that you can make a illustration that it's in vector and that it can be used everywhere, mostly for printing uses. So it doesn't lose the quality once it's it's printed. I hope I'm not going like too fast. No, what do you mean? Am I going am I going too fast? No, no, you are for me you're you perfect. No, no, it's okay. Oh, Joanna says the same. It's okay. Oh, thank okay. you, Jana. Thank you're you. welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And here is a great tutorial how to make something in Adobe Illustrator to use in vectors. It's a cute home. It was very quick just to see how it function and what it is used for. But the thing is, all of this program, they have certain similarities. And once you know how to use uh, perfectly one, it will be easier to, to learn how to use all, all, all the others. So, and now we are moving to my personal favorite Procreate. Uh, Procreate is, well, fairly new app. It's uh, exclusively made for uh, Apple users, so you can download it only on uh, on your iPad. Mm -hmm. But the thing with Procreate, it, for me personally, it, it gives the best feeling of uh, drawing and very similar to the drawing on the actual paper because I used to draw on paper before a lot. And I was scared of the transi transition, like, okay, how how would it feel to, to draw digitally? Because in my whole life I was doing with like pencils and colors and uh, watercolors and acrylics and, ev and everything. And now, because like I felt that the industry is changing and that the digital work is way more appreciated and way more used, I I really was scared how am I going to figure it out. And as soon as I start using Procreate, I was like, okay, that's it. That's it. That's the perfect software for me. Many would say that the Photoshop is it's better for drawing, but for me, Procreate is way easier to to use, and it has like um, a lot of tools that are useful in, in in every drawing or every illustration. I am also working as a ch children book illustrator, so all of the books that I did, and I did quite a lot of them, they were all done in Procreate. And the yes, you have to have an iPad for for Procreate, but you can like take the Procreate and your iPad, and you can draw in a coffee shop, in a restaurant, in the bus, wherever. It's very mobile, so it's it's perfect for someone like me who doesn't like to stay in the office all day or in the house. I I like to move around, so I always have my iPad with me. So this is the some of the brushes that 
it, the appropriate gives you. It's really cool because you can you, you can draw in a lot, a lot of different styles in Procreate. It can give you even the aquarel brush, which looks amazing. It really does look like it was painted on, on the paper. You have like 20 types of pencils from AB to 3B. You have everything and uh, you can, once you make a mistake, you can change it very easily. There is no fear of uh, destroying the paper, which happened many times, I'm sure, for everyone. But once you do digitally, that's, that's not possible because you can always go back. This is uh, some very interesting style for me that I, I just downloaded to, to present that like it's possible to make something like this with, with brushes that they give you. And yes, you can zoom in everything so you can go into many, many details. So if you want to draw like perfect eyelashes, perfect makeup, you can zoom in and do that in a bigger scale and that's cool. That's really cool. And now there is a video, like a very short video of one guy uh, painting inappropriate, like step by step showing. And uh, I will show you. So we can comment later. Danilo, sorry, the video has music. Uh, I, I think this, there's no music in the, no music. In the okay. video. No, it was just uh, step by step showing how how this artist then were uh, painted on this mermaids from 2023, a little mermaid movie. I don't know if someone watched it. Okay. Uh, the reason I took this uh, his process of painting is because it's very similar to the one that you would do on the canvas with a whale and it looks like that but it's completely digital and uh, it's mermaid so i wanted to make everyone's day better <laughs> who doesn't love mermaids uh, of course and it suits so much with the summer perfect yes. very yes. beautiful <laughs> okay now we are going to talk about zbrush uh, ZBrush is also fairly new software. Uh, it's very much used in the film industry, in the video game industry, also animation industry. Uh, it's a uh, software made for 3D sculpting. Now, when I said before that the Photoshop is like a huge program and requires a really good computer, with ZBrush it's it's even more like that. It's it's one of the most complex programs to to work on and to have on your computer. So, uh, but it is really really cool, and the amount that most of the things that you can do with three D modeling, it's limitless. You can do everything, and it's so cool and it's so fun. Uh, I am someone who always liked to sculpt out of the clay traditionally. Um, and when I started to, to sculpt in 3D, I was like, okay, wow, cool, amazing. Um, I don't even get my hands dirty. So it's, it's really, really cool. I will show you now 
So you just want to learn the fundamentals of sculpting in ZBrush. Not a problem. When you start a new project, you will start with the standard brush, which is actually the brush that you need 60% of the time. Left click to activate the brush. The size of your brush is controlled here. How strong the brush is, is controlled by the intensity. And the focal shift is the difference between the minimum and maximum effects of the brush. They are represented by these two red circles. The outside circle is the maximum radius effect of the brush. The inner circle is where the strongest point of the brush is focused. So if we reduce the focal, the full force of the brush gets applied to the whole effect radius. But if we increase the focal, the full force of the brush mainly gets applied on a small area inside the total radius. If you are using a mouse and you have trouble making nice clean curved strokes, I recommend going up to stroke and turning lazy mouse on. This adds some delay when you left click which makes your strokes easier to control. A super useful thing that you can do in lazy mode is if you hold left click, then hold shift, you can make a perfect straight line. This trick is really useful when doing hard surface things. If you increase the radius, it makes the delay even longer for even smoother control. Step controls how often the brush is applied. If you increase it, the brush will start to stagger. I rarely ever mess with lazy smooth or lazy snap. If you want to know what those things do, hover your mouse over them and press control. In fact, for the rest of your life, if you have any questions about anything in ZBrush, just hover over it and hold control. Then ZBrush will explain in clear detail what that button is for. At any point, if you hold shift, you will activate the smooth brush, which does exactly what it sounds like. 90% of your workflow is going to basically be sculpt a little bit, smooth a little bit, sculpt some more, smooth some more, rinse and repeat. At any point if you hold alt, it's going to do the opposite of what your brush does. So on the standard brush, when you left click, it sculpts out, but if you hold alt, instead it's going to sculpt in. When you're using the smooth brush, it smooths things, but if you hold alt, instead it's going to make things rough. Symmetry is on by default, but if you ever want to turn it off, just press the X key. You can always turn it back on by tapping X again. When you rotate the camera, you'll probably notice it rotates at a crazy angle. And as a Blender user, I'm not really a fan of this. So I always turn Y axis on, which makes the camera pivot and rotate the same way it does in Blender. At any point, if you press the F key, the camera will center on the object that you are working on. And there's a few more important things like masking and polygroups, but I think this video is getting way too long, so we'll cover those in the next one. But these are the core fundamentals that have helped me the most. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around. Okay. Well, th this was like a very, very quick tutorial just to, to show you how the ZBrush looks like. Now we have normal, normal sculpt. It's very similar to the ZBrush that we talked about, but it's available on... Uh, so, sorry, Danilo. Sorry to interrupt, my dear. Uh, we have a question from okay. uh, Mrs. Dragana. She asks if a Z brush is only for Mac. I I, I didn't hear you. Uh, if what brush if, is only... if a Z brush is only for Mac? No, the a Z brush is for Windows. Ah, okay. A Z, a Z brush is for Windows, and now Nomad Sculpt that I start to talk about. It's actually a uh, available on iPads, on Mac, on, on everything. So uh, it's kind of the rivalry, rival, or rivalry but uh, I found that, that Nomad Sculpt is a bit simpler. And with, uh, with all the programs or apps that uh, you want to use for digital sculpting, it's the most important thing is that they can, uh, after you finish sculpt, you can translate it into a, a certain type that you can send to your printer. So it can be printed in, in the material that you choose. But uh, it's very important that, that it does have option to save uh, a file in a certain format. But uh, yes, uh, Nomad Sculpt is available for on, for Apple users and ZBrush. Uh, it's for Windows, and I, I think ZBrush it, it does require a, a desktop or like a really good computer. So I hope I answered I answered the, the question. Thank you, thank you, Danilo. I think yes, Mrs. Dragana will uh, tell us later. I think so, you answered. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because I don't see questions anywhere or anything. I'm just, I'm just in my presentation. I don't see, even see myself. The, maybe it's the view style.
Maybe maybe it's better this way because I would distract myself with myself. <laughs> okay, we we hear perfect. We watch perfect. Don't worry. That that's the most important thing. Okay. And if I'm if I am being too fast, let me know. I can slow it down. I just tend to talk faster because we I'm the, the huge family. And if we don't say it fast, you don't say it at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're perfect. With the, we will say to you, for me, the rhythm is very good. Okay, perfect. Now I, I downloaded these pictures so you, I can show you that it's like how much into details you can get, like even sculpting the eyelashes, eyebrows, everything. You can sculpt fabric and you can print print this out in in so so many different uh, different materials now when 3d printed uh, started it it was not good as it is now because first of all it was way slower it was very slow to to produce a 3d printed object and uh, you can only do a couple of uh, materials to to print off now you you basically can print in in anything and we can we will see that also, you can color in, in these softwares, so you can see how it's going to look like once you put color on it. There are some, three, some 3D printers that are also doing the coloring while printing, but those colors, I think, still are not so good. So the best way for me is to print it out in white or in some similar color and then manually by your hand color it with acrylic paint or something similar so you can have like all the details on your sculpture and the thing is it doesn't have to be a sculpture it can be a part of a jewelry it can be a part of armor it can be a part of clothing uh, we will go through that all and the thing that it's like really cool and makes everything so much easier is the symmetry you know because once you are sculpting something in real clay, you really have to pay attention to a symmetry, to anatomy, to everything. And here, digitally, you just sculpt one side and immediately the other side, it's perfectly copied and transformed into a left or right arm or left or right rib. So that makes everything so much easier and faster. So I think it's really, really cool because it saves up time. But yeah, also what I wanted to say is this it, it does look very easy. Like, okay, this is so, so much easier. In a way it is because you do have all of these pluses, but in the same time, uh, it, it's very difficult to, to get started and to understand all of the parameters in in these softwares because it's so different they are not using centimeters they're not they're not using inches it's like something completely different and all the tools are new because it's for sculpting not for illustration so it does need some time to to get used to that and to to learn but once you do you you can make like a lot of cool things this is some ring that it was sculpted on 3D and the details are cool. Also, you can do parts of armor and you can print it out in, in the similar fabric or you can make a mold so you can make many copies out of the original 3D printed version. Mm. The options are seriously limitless, and, and in a way, I, I really think that the future, and even now, it's 3D printing in, in the costume industry for something like this. Because armors are very difficult to make. There are not many people in the, in the world who make them like good, and they are also very heavy if they are made accurately but you can make armor printed out in 3D made out of plastic and 
actor will be way happier because it will weigh like 300 grams, not three kilograms. <laughs> so it's easier to wear, but it looks the same. And this is also some picture that I wanted to show because of the details and how much possibility it does give you. Um, you can like it or not, but like the detail, the detailing and the craftsmanship here, it's, it's amazing. And it's all in 3D. And here we have one very interesting plate. Google Ren Faire opening soon. I've been experimenting with doing 3D printed Dragon Scale. I did this tiny test print first, and honestly I was really amazed with how well the print and play scale mail came out on an FDM printer. I'm using the Cobra 3, which is Anycubic's newest printer release. I did a bigger piece next with this beautiful filament from Polymaker. This is honestly a game changer for a sort of scale mail hack if you're on a time crunch or you just want some super unique colors. I wanted to make this piece into something wearable, so I incorporated it into a purse. I love how it came out and I'm definitely going to be taking this with me to the Ren Fair this summer. Okay. I, I personally think that this purse is very ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but the scales from Dragon that she made are amazing and they are sculpted in 3D and printed out in 3D and it kind of uh, perfectly shows the possibility of movement in those kind of garments uh because it mimics the fabric it mimics the armor and you can like you can move your body in that plastic it's really cool ah, this this is also very interesting uh this is a serbian guy he works in Levisi in chicago and he's very very successful he worked with so many celebrities uh, like i don't know katy perry and, and others that we will see here. He also works for theater and he, he is very, very talented. But the cool thing is that all of the jewelry and uh, the base for the jewelry, he, he does uh, sculpt in 3D and print it out. Then he decorates it and you will see how cool it does look in the end. This, this was some Halloween party and beautiful 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 model was was wearing this costume that was originally created for Alaya for some movie about vampires but this is just the version for the Halloween part mm -hmm. so check it out mm -hmm. I think it doesn't have any music it doesn't and it's not important everything is it's kind of physical uh-huh cool so he paints everything of course there are there are things that are done by by hand in the end like sewing and stuff but so many things are 3d printed and sculpted out so it can be perfectly symmetrical and look at her she looks amazing she is beautiful And this is another video of his. He was making the first theater show. And again, I will repeat this looks so easy, it is not true. <laughs> You should definitely check or check out his Instagram because there are many many cool things that he did not just in 3D in general in costumes um, and fashion he he is quite successful and extremely extremely talented so um, go follow him he's amazing yes but sure. also the the thing that I wanted to say he made a corset here printed out in 3D, uh, but once you work in 3D, you have the mesh, the, you can make 
of course, it with the perfect measurements. Uh, for example, this concert, this corset was a bit uh, wider because the actress was, I wouldn't say plus size, but she would not fit into a regular, regular small corset, but he, he, he made it to fit perfectly on her body. And it really did. Go on his Insta and, and check it out. <laughs> and now we are going to talk about concept art in costume design. Why concept art? Because I think the concept art right now is the most affected by the all the changes in the arts and crafts in a way of going more digital, like with all the software that that I was talking about before. Uh, concept art is very important. Usually it is done before uh, starting to create costumes so you can have like great uh, artworks that represent the costumes that needs to be made so it can be shown to sometimes sponsors, sometimes to the seamstresses to, to start selling the costumes if the costumes are new and if they have to be invented. Uh, concept artist is the guy who or girl who who draws them, and they are very important, and they are aesthetically very pleasing usually. So you can see them in newspapers and when they are presenting the candidates for Oscars. Sometimes they represent like the concept art behind the costumes. It's different every year, but it's cool to it's cool to do that. It's it's actually my favorite part of the whole making of the costume pro process. This this is the concept for concept art for Doctor Strange. I don't know if you saw the movie. I'm a big fan of the Marvel superheroes movies. And uh, this shows that how in the beginning phase they were not sure in which direction to go. So there were actually more than two options. I just found that the, those two are mine. Uh, in the end, they they decided to go with red, but I think the blue also looked really really cool. Uh, but yeah, this this is like the perfect concept art sketch with the face of the actor and how it will look before it was even made. This is Galadriel uh, from Rings of Power. Yes the new TV show, like the prequel of Lord of the Rings. And it is very cool because they 3D printed almost everything. But the design is great. And this is drawn in Procreate. It looks like it is drawn on paper, but it's actually, it is Procreate. And the armors in this movie were so beautiful. I mean, the, the whole costume design was amazing. I loved it. Many people didn't, like the huge Lord of the Rings fan. They, they didn't like it because it didn't follow the exact story that Tolkien was writing about. I, I personally don't care that much. I just thought the show was beautiful and the costumes were amazing. And her costume was like kind of pearlish whitish but with beautiful beautiful details so I, I recommend watching that just for just for sake of pretty costumes this is uh, hobbit and this is also from rings of power uh all, everything is done in procreate and the details are so well thought through it's so even fashionable i I really like it. And I will show here like a lot of different types of concept art. But the point is that it shows the costume in the, in the best way to, to be possible to make them. The name of this character I will not say because I don't want to spoil if you haven't watched it yet. But yeah, he also had a cool armor and a cool characteristic. This is the Queen of Dwarfs. And uh, yeah, it's it's a perfect example of how the collage is it's actually used in her dress. She's a great character, by the way, very funny and very interesting. 
and uh, yeah you can see a lot of jewelry here a lot of everything they started out with this and they made like the, exactly the same dress but also many other similar dresses also very beautiful seriously i, I recommend to watch the show this is like the first versions of the hobbits nothing special but still costume is very visible and it's a very good start for seamstresses and stuff like that. Uh, now this is for Oppenheimer. Um, I think this illustration just by itself, it's so beautiful, it could exist even without a film, but it does show the, the costume very, very, very well. Also, it gives off the, the whole vibe of the movie. And that's that's like very important. The the thing with concept artists is like costume designer who are nowadays more costume managers. Uh, they sit with a costume designer with a concept artist, and they are like, okay, we kind of want this, and they give them like the mm, inspiration photos and everything. But when you think about it, the biggest costume designer in the whole set of uh, costume department is the concept artist when when the costumes are made new and not reused so it's it's really 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 cool to see how it all started out and it it is drawn digitally this is for dune so you see how cool it is you you don't have to draw like two figures you don't have to draw two times anything you draw him once and you can copy and paste them and just put the cape on the other. So you can see both versions for uh, less time and less effort, but it's cool. This is for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Harry Potter Universe. This is the Colin Farrell. And you can see how much actually they did follow the the concept artist instructions here, because even like from the smallest detail details on his sleeves, everything is like made perfectly like that. So it's a really cool costume. They they were nominated for for Oscars, I think. Also, this dress is very pretty. This is a concept art for Cinderella with Camila Cabello. I don't know if you watched this movie, it was popular like for three days. I watched it because I watched like all fairy tales remakes. <laughs> so I watched all 30 of Cinderella movies. And it was fine, it was okay. Yeah. The, the costumes were like very popular on social media because I guess they 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 were attractive and those sketches were everywhere. And uh, yeah, the movie has one great song. Other than that, it's, it's seriously nothing special. Just another Cinderella, Cinderella movie. This is also from Cinderella, the, the concept art sketches. And uh, here we have a West Side Story. Now, this is not like the most beautiful sketch, uh, but it does show the dress perfectly. So the Every detail on dress is correct. So that's the most important thing probably in that moment. So they they kept the sketch. But the illustration is not like aesthetically pleasing like the ones from Oppenheimer or the ones that we will see later because I prepared some really cool ones. This is also from West Side Story. So you see, it's not a perfect sketch. It's not like the artwork, but... Uh, it shows the costume in the best possible way. So, okay, cool. And we have now here concept art for uh, Black Panther movie. They got the Oscar for best costume design. And this is from the second movie, Wakanda Forever. It's really amazing what they did with, I mean, I'm not the, African person, and uh, I know that the costume designer was inspired by some African traditional clothing, 
but they also wanted to create like this whole new country that exists in this world but nobody knows about but to give off the um, some African countries vibe so from my point of view they, they, they did that in they did a good job, aesthetically very pleasing. This is from Aquaman. Uh, this is all 3D printed, like all the part around his neck, all 3D printed. And it's cool to see how, how they were thinking. This costume did not end up in the movie, but it was a possibility that was really, really nice. And this is my favorite. This is old. This is from Pirates of Caribbean on Stranger Tides. I think that was the fourth movie of Pirates of Caribbean. And when they started the whole production and uh, talking about the movie, uh, they knew that they were going to include mermaids. And now with mermaids, it's very expensive to shoot anything underwater. And it's very difficult because everything needs to be CGI. And when there is so much of CGI in, in, in one shot, it can look fake. So it is very difficult. But this was their idea of how the mermaids would look like once they are underwater. In the movie, we didn't see them like this. We just saw them like as beautiful models and actresses once they were half out of the water beautiful scene but uh, I, i'm really sorry that they didn't go to to the end with this idea because for me this this is like wow so cool i would so like to see this in the movie and yes it was completely drawn in in photoshop and for this kind of avatar they did use the actress face for for having this illustration but it's beautiful yes here we also have some more mermaids. And now when I say mermaid, this is not a costume, but it is a costume <laughs> in a way. It's still a garment that actor would uh, wear, but in CGI. So it's still part of the cost costume and still something that costume designers should think of. Why not? It's, it's a magical world. And this is the concept art for uh, Mad Max. They got the Oscar. You see, this is not like beautiful, beautiful, but it does give up the, the vibe of the Mad Max. So it's cool. They got the, the Oscar for best costume design. Um, and it's very like dirty looking. It's cool. It's cool. And with this, uh, yeah, we have one. Uh, this is concept art for Avatar. Uh, I think the costume on the left was never used. Uh, it was just an option, but the costume on the right was in the look. So it's cool to see how the costume designer was thinking and what options did they did they want and not want about it. Again, this is all CGI, but it is also a costume, so it's the, the line does not exist. And before I, I start to talk about this topic, I, I would like to hear if there are some questions, maybe. Yes. Yes, we have Danilo. Um, in the chat, can I ah, read I it? Yes, we answered to Mrs. Dragana about uh, if a ZBrush is only for Mac, and Danilo said no, it's for Windows also. Hmm? Do, do you believe that Procreate is easier to learn and draw on than Photoshop? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, definitely way, way easier. But when you learn first in Photoshop, the knowledge is kind of bigger because there are different things that you do in, in Photoshop that you are able to do in Photoshop than in, uh, in Procreate. But for drawing, specifically for drawing, uh, Procreate is easier and better solution. And as I said, more mobile, so you can go anywhere and draw. 
I mean, here it is. I was drawing with like five minutes before I logged in here. <laughs> so I, I definitely do recommend, but I will give you the, the example. Uh, I do illustration in Procreate uh, every time. Uh, and then I send it to my Photoshop to check the resolution, to check the corners, size, the trim edges. Uh, and when I do that, then I send it off to, to a printing, for example, because everything, everything has to be checked in Photoshop before printing, especially if it's like some big project and there, there cannot be a mistake. You have to check everything. So Photoshop is the most secure way, but for strictly illustrating, drawing, sketching, Procreate is like the best, best app that you can download. And it's very cheap. It costs like $12. You buy it once and you don't have to think about it ever again. So it is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. What is yes. the most important for a fashion or a costume to designer to draw well or digital programs? Uh, most important for fashion or costume designers is to... You, you don't have to know the programs, but it will make your job easier if you want to, to, to work in fashion or costume. And it can like make you more opportunities in that way, especially if you are the type to, to be attracted to drawing. Uh, I always was. I started to draw when I was two, so this was kind of logical for me. I did learn how to sew on a machine and uh, by hand, I know how to do it, um, but I'm not best at it. But I know some designers that don't know how to draw, no digitally, no traditionally on paper, but they are great in sewing. So you need to have um, some of those parts to be able to know how to make your brain function in a way of creating the new ideas. Otherwise, uh, I, I also have a friend who is like completely talented, uh, doesn't know how to do anything, doesn't know how to draw, doesn't know how to sew, doesn't know anything, but he decided to want to be a designer, like every football player's wife. And <laughs> the thing is, he doesn't know how to use his brain. He is like, oh, I have so many ideas, but he doesn't. He doesn't, he, because there is no way in his brain to visualize what's possible and what's not, because he doesn't, he doesn't know what it is possible to sew on and to make out of the fabric. He doesn't know how it will look. He doesn't know anything, but he wants to be. So you, you have to know something in able to be um, possible to, to have clear vision in your head while you are creating. That's my opinion, and it's like maybe I'm wrong, but I I, I think I'm right. <laughs> uh, can I use making AI illustration for my novels? Okay, this is the topic that I left for the end. Uh, can you use that? Uh, of course you can. You will not go to jail for it. Uh, is it wrong? Yes, in, in so many ways. We will talk about it. Um, AI images, illustration, they have like zero artistic quality. There is no artistic weight in it because uh, first of all, it's made artificially. So it doesn't have a soul in it. It's completely artificial. And the second thing that is like the biggest problem that no, nobody is taking care of, uh, AI is functioning that way that it's uh, taking all the data from the internet, from all the other illustrators, including me, including everyone who posted anything on, on social media or on internet and it combines in a way that you want. So you do type a couple of words and you do get the perfect illustration in style of whatever you want. So you, you can have a like little mermaid in the style of 
uh, Van Gogh. You, you, you can have that and it will look completely like he painted it, but it's not true, it's fake. And I strongly do not recommend using AI for your novels. Pay uh -huh. illustrator to do a good job, find the illustrator that works for you, works for your vision. And uh, that's the best way to do it. Otherwise it's, it's also, I mean, I'm not that insulting and I don't care that much, but many illustra illustrators are very much insulted by AI uh, programs for illustrating books. Is it illegal, Danilo? No, it's, it, it's legal. It's very ah. legal still. And uh, Hollywood was even trying to, because AI is a huge, huge uh, thing that it covers not just illustration. There is like artificial intelligence for questions and answers. There is AI for uh, making movies. And now they the whole protests that were happening in Hollywood last year. Um, it was also partly because Hollywood studios wanted to produce artificial intelligence uh, actors who would play as uh, background actors everywhere and they would pay them once and basically you can you can make a movie with millions of people in the background acting the real people but paying them just once so it was it was very wrong i don't mm. recommend you don't recommend you okay. say, I don't know. It, sorry no. you said it's illegal it's not illegal many people uh, yeah especially with youngsters yeah because young people unfortunately don't uh, don't think about ethical uh, sides of this topic many people is there uh, I, I find it spooky and we as second player stunts would lose jobs yes you that would happen too so in that way I would not like contribute to AI in any way. Uh, what would I do? I what I usually do when I see AI uh, illustrations on social media, I blog them. I blog them because I really don't even want to see them. It's very creepy. I have a couple of examples left in my presentations, and I will show. So we can then go back to the questions. Just to find a way to go <laughs> back to the. Back to my presentation. Okay. okay, here I am. Okay, and we continue with questions. Current side. Okay, so this is like big no no to artificial intelligence. And yes, it can be funny. I had to put this picture here. It's Mariah Carey hitting J Law because she doesn't know her. But it's still wrong. It's very wrong to use people like that. They never posed in this way. They they never said to each other. And uh, we can laugh and what, or whatever, but it's very wrong to use uh, someone's face without their permission. Like here, we have Beyonce attending to a Met Gala this year, the first image. That never happened. She was not attending and she was not wearing something like this. Okay. <laughs> completely that... AI generated photo. Danilo, it's not full screen, my dear. Now. Oh, yeah, it's not full screen. Oh, so sorry. Okay, it's okay. Just mm -hmm. notice it. So you cannot see Beyonce. It, it's not full screen, yes. We see the slide, the slide, of course, but it's not full screen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I didn't go to share it before. I forgot. Mm -hmm. Can you see now? No, it's not full. It's not full screen. 
it's the same like uh, when before starting. What what button did you? I forgot. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. We we can see it, uh, Danilo. It's big picture. What it's big image, What image do you see? It's uh, the three girls. Um, okay. the butterfly. It's uh, I don't know. Well, now. Yeah. This is this is the artificial intelligence version of Beyonce. And, Beyonce. Uh, yes, she never attended this Met Gala this year. She she was not there, but this image was very popular, and so many people believe that she was she came and she was wearing this. Uh, it's wrong, first of all, because like she didn't want to come. She didn't come. Who is anybody to? to put her in such yes. a realistic way there. Of course. Second of all, she would never wear this outfit for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, it's not for a Met Gala. Second of all, it's impossible to make. AI still doesn't know what is possible to make and what is not. So this whole beating behind her, it would not be possible to make in this way. In the middle, we have... Um, the rose dress um and when you see a picture you're like oh wow so pretty dress made out of the rose but this dress first of all this model doesn't exist this is a combination of like five different asian models so she doesn't exist second of all this dress it's impossible to move in it doesn't have placements for your hands and yeah. you there is no way that you can properly walk in it. Uh, on the third image, it's the same situation with, with a model that, that does not exist. AI combined a couple of different fashion models and created uh, like, okay, beautiful woman, but she doesn't exist. It's, it's completely weird. Yeah, and it goes like... To, to a very realistic point of uh, imagery. And it's weird to see, and it's wrong to see, and it steals people's jobs. And for example, this, now I see uh, this picture in the middle, it has 25,000 likes on Instagram. That's a reach of around 500,000. So 500,000 people saw this image of nothing. Basically, it's, worthless and uh, it's it's a space that is given to someone who didn't deserve it uh it shouldn't be there it shouldn't have the popularity but unfortunately social medias are not working in in, in that way and uh, instagram also said that there is nothing they can do about artificial intelligence and now many artists are going into a different platforms to post their art but I doubt that it's going to to become successful because Instagram is Instagram so mm. yeah that's what I wanted to say about AI and that would be all for my presentation thank you thank you all very much for for listening if Thank you have like uh, more questions, I'm I'm very much open. Yes, Danilo. Now, Mr. Panos Gisiotis writes to us something in chat. I don't know if you can see. I see. I opened the chat and I will read now yeah. about the thing I can uh, I can stand is that people using AI to do art claims they have created their art, uh, which is wrong and unfair. Completely, completely wrong. Completely unfair. It's basically stealing from other artists, and it's um, it's really bad. It's it's poor. It's awful. It's um, the way we can fight it. It's to talk about it and to block it on social media so it doesn't have the the reach that it does. I cannot blame always the people who don't know because they just see beautiful pictures. Many times they see it and they think it's real because they don't have like certain knowledge behind the, the dressmaking. 
for example, but uh, it shouldn't be uh, allowed to exist in that form, but it does. And it grows and it's sm smarter and smarter every day because it collects more and more data from, from all around the world. And I would say that it's like also, it's stole from me a million times. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, can I download these uh, art apps on my mobile phone, perhaps? No, no, you cannot. Uh, technically, te uh, technically, I think Procreate you can download on your uh, iPhone, but the thing that you would need is iPencil. Um, without that one, you cannot draw with your finger. So no, and all the other programs are for computer users, and mobile phones would not would not uh, support it. But uh, technically, maybe procreate, but there's not much that you can do with a with a finger. Thank you for your question, Catherine. Thank you all. Uh Hello, can hello, I Panos. Oh, how are you? Hi. Hello, Panos. So, uh, Danilo, it was very nice to have you here today. Thank you. Yeah, hope to have you again next week. It will be very nice. Uh, I will uh, just join the list. I have another question, but it's not actually a question, but an observation. Shouldn't okay. we? Shouldn't we already? be given a law to protect uh, uh, us, the creators, from AI. There is no law protecting artists. And AI exists for almost two years. And uh, no one does nothing except Hollywood that uh, made it and banned AI from actually representing uh, artists, actors, actually. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, with actors, it was very loud because many famous actors and actresses uh, yeah. were standing mm -hmm. against That's it, true. so it was like a big no-no. But when it comes yeah. to to artists in the way of illustrators, um, like we we can't be that loud because nobody wants to listen that that much, and uh, it is still the same problem. But yes, but shouldn't there be a law? For example, I know that so many writers had already tried uh, J.R. Martin and so many others. They have already tried to make the United States courts make a law protecting the creators, but we have no law. Like, this is so unreasonable. I can't understand that. Meta, you know, Facebook and Instagram yeah. uh, has already planned uh, by 16 of July uh, if we don't uh, uh, like it, we can move to another app because they have already made uh, an adjustment to Instagram saying that you have no other option. You have no option to protect your information. Yes. Like people in Asia and in, in the United States, they can't stop uh, Meta from stealing everything, including the messages mm -hmm. from everyone to train the AI. And they can do nothing. Like It's like, oh, you want to be on Instagram? Okay, we, can, we are able to take everything from you. And no one does anything, like no one talks about it. It yeah. steals your messages, your personal photos, your everything to train its AI model. Like, True. I, yes, and they believe that they are smart. They say a bunch of nonsense because I have already read um, what's going to happen. And it just forces you to scroll down and press OK. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the the problem problem seems to just get bigger and bigger. AI yeah. seems to be smart, smarter, 
and uh, to look more professional. Um, but yeah, nobody's doing anything about it, and it threatens to become a huge problem yeah. from the many industries, especially yeah. creative ones. And also that happened uh, with Apple, which announced some days ago that in the new iPhones and the next gen products, they will have uh, an AI uh, app embedded everywhere. That means that everything is going to work out on an AI software that comes with the mobile phones and you don't have a chance. It's going to steal everything. Yeah, and, yeah, Elon Musk, yeah, yeah. and Elon Musk tweeted that if this happened, he's going to ban Twitter from all for all AI, uh, for all Apple users. He's going to exclude Twitter from Apple devices because of that. Because it's still of information and personal data. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. yeah. Very and interesting what you say, Barnes. It's weird that nobody does anything. It's so freaking weird. I'm forced to delete Instagram because it's going to see all of my messages, all of my personal data and photos. And I believe that everyone that has a small brain and are reasonable are going to do the same thing, but nobody nobody seems to care. Like every one of us here that have Instagram, by 16th of July, Instagram is going to copy all of our messages and everything and add that information uh, to train an AI model and who knows what else. Yeah, true. True, but the problem comes when uh, a person work depends on Instagram because there are many so many artists that are successful on Instagram and uh, many jobs they have through Instagram so it's it's a, it's very problematic it's not uh, not always easy to to delete your account yeah, it's well that, that's true that's true but there are so many other apps so many other apps that Artists exist there and they have uh, their personal work and they can choose whatever they want to feed an AI or not. Yeah. That's happened before, but now Meta forces you to accept it. Yeah, the, 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 this is a completely different thing. I mean, with my experience, uh, on Instagram, I had like a couple of, I would say, viral posts. And uh, it's not like, okay, AI can find it just on my profile. Once you put a drawing, picture, or whatever on internet, it stays on internet everywhere all the time. And now when I type something that I was drawing with Google, I see my drawings on so many sites and so many mm, different profiles just used. And I don't mind. I, in a way, I did share it with the world, uh, but in the same time, I didn't allow it reusing it for for anything. And one very famous uh, fashion illustrator, uh, which is very cool and very nice guy, Caden Williams. I think everybody knows him. Uh, he's the most popular fashion illustrator on on Instagram. He has over one million followers. But he's very nice, and uh, once we talked, and uh, I mentioned like, hey, I found out about your work once I was in Greece on a summer vacation, and some people were selling like t-shirts and bags with your your work on it, and he was like, yes, I know, I uh, never allowed that, I never got any penny from that, it was just illegally downloaded from internet uh, and sold everywhere. So it's it, and with things like that, you, you you cannot fight. It's it's a Gucci situation. Yes, it's a big issue. And it is a big it, issue, and I hope it will be addressed by the big ones in, in the near future, because like in in way it has to stop. Some, somehow. Somehow there must be a protection. For sure, there is international law of copyright, and for sure there is. But to our everyday 
um, habits like uh, Instagram, Facebook and everything and all our personal information and what Pano says. Yes, I don't know if um, we are like hypnotized. We, we don't find the time to care or don't know how to care or if we have to care or if, if something serious happens and it will come against us one day in a serious way, we, we just use it and we like it and we use it for our jobs too, like you said, Danilo. Uh, for sure, it's a deep issue. Panos, thank you very much. It's a very interesting uh, topic to discuss about it. Um, I, I don't, uh, I confess, I don't have, I personally don't have um, more information on this, something more to say. But it's it's for sure very interesting to discuss. Uh, well, it, it affects all of us. It can affect us even more. Um, at least that we should be it should be aware of it especially the uh, especially people in the art field who are posting uh, on the internet like i do without no brain <laughs> <laughs> i mean now not so much but i used to post way way more before and i was it, it was my in way happy place i was getting the compliments and like okay why not post it it's 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 just nice uh, okay. But nowadays, I don't even have that much time to to draw, especially something for social media that will get attention. Um, but uh, and also in situations like this, I'm not sure even how I how much I want to. But we we will definitely see. But I think it's good to be aware of what's happening. So this conversation, I'm really glad that we have it. Yes. Yes, my dear Danilo. Yes, sorry, uh, I changed topic. I see some other in the chat comments. Um, mm -hmm. Can I download our tabs and talk about the answer? You can download out the desk sketchbook. It's similar to GPS and free. Okay, but it's more simple version. My pleasure, sir. I thought I don't have iPhone computer tab. Maybe with time, take your time. There are versions for both S to the okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the, the programs that I was that I was mentioning they are like very very professional and you cannot have like Photoshop on your on your phone because it's too complex. You can have many apps and uh, and things to, to retouch and to even draw, but um it it could never go Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there like some other questions? Yes. Anyone else wants to, to share something? For sure, it was a, a very interesting workshop, Danilo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I personally found it very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. useful. Yes. Yeah, I, I I tried to put a bunch of things in, in one presentation. Maybe it was like uh, not too detailed on on each software, but uh, it kind of gave the idea to explore more and to, as I said in the beginning, inspire. So um, yeah, as, as, as we talk about AI as a really bad thing that is happening right now, not everything digital is bad. Uh, digital art is a real thing and it's really cool and you can grow and learn and be creative in so many ways digitally so don't run away from that but still be aware the, yes. the society and the and the place that we are creating so. yes my dear but for sure, yes, it's very impressive. The the result many times it's very impressive. And I just I just made a friend request to you, my dear Danilo. Oh, I we're yeah. not friends in Facebook. We're, we're not friends. No, we're not. And oh, I just God. I just found your 
artistic figure and I see the profile picture. Is this a drawing of yours, this lady? Uh, it's on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, yes. Oh, yeah, it's really old one. It is. It is. It's, it's very, yeah, okay. for me, it's fabulous. Thank yes. you, thank you. I don't know if everybody understood. You told it before, that, and I don't know if I say it well, so you have to correct me. Um, you you draw um, animation, and please say, say it better than me. When I first met you, I, I made this image inside me because I play for children and I love everything that has to do with them. So uh, I made the, your image drawing um, animation for children. Yes, I am. But I you do doing, more than that. I do, I do more than that. I do, uh, yes, illustration for, for children. I, okay, here is my book. Okay, uh, <laughs> show mean, us. Yes, I can show you. This is a book about Grace Kelly, and I was the, the published illustrator. Uh, it's by Amberly, and uh, yeah, all the illustration work inside is mine. Oh my god, it's so beautiful! It, 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 it's very cute, and and it speaks about Grace Kelly's life. What, what is yes, it? yes, it's licensed and it's really cool. Very cool. Oh my God! So she's so, oh, so well drawn. I don't have many of my books because I usually usually work for U.S. market. Uh, but this one I really liked, so I I I my friend gifted it to me, and uh, but yeah, I I did a early maybe forty fifty children books in, in total it's all it's a lot of it's very, okay. and very this, cool. is, this is I, I would say this is all drawing appropriate so appropriate does give you that uh, professional side that it can be printed out once in, in a huge format and uh, it's really cool and you will be uh, I will show you now another thing that I did in uh, Nomad Sculpt that I 3D printed and put it all together. This is like the exclusive. Not many people saw it, but I will, I will show you. I will show you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. <laughs> <laughs> for everything. <laughs> this is this is my 3D printed doll. I have more of them. Wow. Yeah, this is the sorry. Part. Can this you turn off? Screen. Can you turn off the share screen? I don't see uh, what about you talking. Uh, mm -hmm. Stop share. Thank you. Okay, now it's fine. Yes, we, we see the uh, windows, all of us here. We see you. Okay, so this, this is one of the dolls that I did for the fasheration project inspired by Serbian traditional clothing. And all the parts of her are sculpted out in Nomad Sculpt digitally and then printed out in skin colored resin. And yeah, I saw her dress by hand and the face and the hair, it's also done completely by me. She even have a real eyelashes and she does have like a huge articulation so she can move her hands, knees, head, waist, everything. She can pose, but it's difficult to, to pose her in this position while I'm the camera. I just wanted to show you something that it was made by uh, 3D sculpting. And yes, yeah, she does have an embroidered bag. So yeah, she's cool. I have a couple of those. <laughs> She's very beautiful, so detailed, created. Thank you, Danilo. <laughs> yeah, it's very detailed. Thank you, thank you. I mean, it was it, it was a pleasure sharing this with you. I hope you had fun, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So, everyone is covered. If someone wants to say something.
I think. Okay. That's it, I think another uh, co costume design workshop came to an end. Uh, it was the eighth one. We thank a lot again, once more, our dear Danilo. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you and love you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will write to you through Facebook. I will ask your email to send you commemorative material. And of course, mm -hmm. we will send to everybody the video from today's workshop, as always. Perfect. Okay. So I have to say goodbye. Goodbye. Thank goodbye. you again. Yes, time. We'll see each other soon. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's very nice to say that. Wish to see you again, to meet all of us soon in the next uh, Spectaculous Projects workshops. So thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a nice thank evening. You. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care always, all thank of you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Zenaida. Thank you, beautiful people. Bye-bye. Take care.